And I said, you know, what type of startups is it? And he said, uh, people are just getting started, you know, the kind of the startup school mentality. So I just wanted to see like quick round of who's kind of in the first six months of their startup or thinking about getting a company off the ground um, coming up. Cool, that's great. Um, so uh, the, the main thing I want to impart from this is first of all, I think the value of using really, really great third party tools. And then secondly, I want to share with you like a little kind of compendium I've put together of 30 party tools that I think you guys might find useful when you're making your startups. Um, quick background on me. Um, uh, I'm one of the founders of Songkick. We, um, we actually went to the US to start the company with Y Combinator out um, in Boston in 2007. Then we moved back to the UK. Um, but still, you know, the bulk of our traffic comes from the US. Um, we raise money from angels and then a VC in the UK. Um, and Songkick's all about live music, so um, we're very focused on one thing, which is helping fans um, discover gigs in their area. We don't you know, go anywhere near recorded music, like playback of MP3s or publishing or news. All we do is gigs. Um, and one of the big lessons we learned was how important focus was. And you, know, you always hear that from VCs and investors um, generally saying, you know, keep the main thing, the main thing, um, you know, make sure you're focused on your inner core value, etc. And um, that's a great sort of, you know, summary of what you should do, but actually how you do it is, is the hard part. And that's kind of where I think tools can really come into play. So um, I want to do another quick show of hands. Um, based on some tools that you know we use or other startups like us use to see who's already using them, whether you heard of them, etc. So who um, who uses a web framework at the moment like Rails or Django or something like that, like hands up. And um, uh, who's heard of a web framework like Django or Rails and you know is aware of the existence of these things? Cool. Um, what about like a, an analytics package like Google Analytics? Like who's heard of that and uses it? Cool. Chartbeat? So one guy over there, cool. Um, why slow? Who's heard of that? Who uses that? Cool. Um, Yahoo Site Explorer. Um, Solar for search. Uh, Mashery for APIs. Um, New Relic for performance monitoring real stuff. Uh, Crowd Factory for social stuff. Um, Get Satisfaction. Uh, Firebug. And yeah, a lot of developers. Um, Google Keyword Explorer. Anyone use that? Cool. So I think what was really interesting from my perspective on that is that lots of hands went up, probably like, you know, maybe a fifth for most things, but the hands that went up weren't the same ones. So, you know, it's not like there's just a core group of people who know all those tools and everybody else is like completely blindly unaware of anything out there that could be useful. Um, and that's really one of the main messages I want to get to. So, um, if you accept that focus is really important for a startup, you have to ask yourself, well, what is focus, right? So I think focus is articulating what it is that your startup does better than any other startup out there and then nailing that thing. And um, so for us, that's all about being the best site for live music fans. For Doppler, it's about you know making it as easy as possible to share your future travel plans. For Skype, it's making cheap phone calls, etc. cetera. Um, for Love Film, it's you know, being able to rent DVDs really easily. Um, and that's fine, you know, you're building your, your main service, but then what happens when you want to make something that is key and necessary, but it's not your core value? So I'll give you three examples from Songkick. So um, we um, email people when bands that they've listened to announce uh, tour dates in their town, right? And that's something that, you know, we think makes it easier to go to gigs, but having an email delivery system is not our core focus. So that's the sort of thing we'd be investing time in, but it's not our core. Um, similarly, you know, on our new site, which is launching in about um, three weeks' time, we've got a pretty heavy real-time component. And you know, if you want to do like a lot of real-time stuff, like Twitter and FriendFeed are doing, you've got to have some back-end infrastructure that supports that. But again, it's not our core focus, but we'd like to do it. Um, and then finally, we're really big believers in test-driven development at Songkick. And when you start to like scale that up to a pretty large code base. Um, you know, you need some tools that make it easy to to, um, to make your tests run really, really quickly. Um, and again, you know, you need a test framework, and that's something you maybe don't want to build in house. So um, when you come across that type of problem, you've got two main choices. The first is you say, okay, well, my core focus was X, and I'm now going to modify it to be Y to make these talk, make this thing I need to do part of the core. So for us, we could say that you know, 
email is just so core to our business that we're going to actually do a really good job of that in-house. Um, and the alternative is you say, this isn't our core, but we're kind of going to get through it as fast as possible anyway. And that's where tools come in really, really handy. Um, so well, by tools, I basically mean any third-party application that's been developed that can help you solve the problem that is sort of urgently pressing, but it's not your core competency. Um, and third parties, you know, can be anything from like an open source uh, you know, framework um, to a commercially avail available analytics package or um, uh, a, you know, a suite for managing APIs. Um, and, and that's all really good. So here's some, here's some examples of, um, of frameworks, you know, like Google, uh, Google tools like Google Analytics or uh, Mashery or Chartbeat. They're all things that I would define in this tools category. So um, the first thing I did is I put together like a little uh, wiki of tools that I thought you guys might find useful. So um, this is like, you know, uh, visible on the web at startuptools.pbwiki.com. And um, about uh, 10 startups have contributed to it so far, including a bunch of startups uh, from Y Combinator, a bunch of startups we're friends with, like some startups that share investors with us, etc. Um, and you know, I, I roughly group things into like various different buckets, like search or bugs or performance or analytics or location or databases or testing, etc. Um, and you know, this is intended to be a living kind of breathing document because obviously tools go in and out of fashion. And um, this is really something for you guys to kind of hopefully make use of afterwards and kind of uh, build a, a small community around. Um, but the thing that you know, I realized when I was talking about this, and Mike said, you know, talk about some useful tools, is how do you actually you know, find useful tools without a wiki like this? And the best thing that I've found for finding out is to talk to other startups, because they face the same problems, um, and they might be further down the curve in terms of evaluating all the different options out there for you. So um, a couple of examples that we had. Um, so you know, in the, in, the, in the process of implementing some some more sophisticated ways of delivering email. You know, that's all the sort of stuff like, you know, once you get past a certain volume of email, you don't want like emails to be hitting spam folders and getting on blacklists. And you want to have some really decent analytics telling you how many emails got opened or, you know, how many emails certain things were clicked in and etc. We didn't want to build that in-house, so what we did is we reached out to startups we were friends with, either through the Y Combinator network or through uh, our investors or through um, just startups that we hang out with on a regular basis. And what we found was pretty interesting. Um, and that was that, you know, the startups we talked to reduced um, uh, Topspin in LA. Um, who else did we talk to? Um, on the email side, we talked to uh, Dailymotion and, um, and also like another company in Shoreditch who were kind of in stealth mode. And, um, and the thing we found is all those startups had got started with one third party tool, like they picked something like uh, Email Vision or they picked something like uh, Responsys or Exact Target. And I could ring off you know, 30 different third party email delivery tools.